for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff out the man. She's always got a tip video for you guys today. Today, I'm be going over pre snap adjustments. To me, 90% of Madden games are won before the play even starts, and that's all coming from pre snap adjustments. So, today, I'm gonna be going over the most important pre snap adjustments to do on offense and defense that give you the best chance to win games in Madden. If you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's get right into the video. Now, starting off on offense, before you even get to the plays that you're gonna call, you're going to want to set up your coaching adjustments on offense there's not really a ton that i would recommend but when it comes to things like blocking obviously better blocking is a huge advantage you can go aggressive and your blocks will hold longer on run plays and pass plays you might get a lot more holding penalties but that's something to think about the conservative option is not an option at all what you're so dumb you are really dumb for real when it goes to ball carrying, I don't typically mess with this too much either, but if you need to make big plays, aggressive will sometimes give a higher chance of triggering auto break tackles. So aggressive is a better way to go there, uh, but then it also increases your chances of fumbling. If you're ahead late in games, a lot of times conservative is the best approach because you'll protect the ball better and it decreases the chances of fumbling, but you'll also be a lot less fluid when it comes to your running back movements. The next thing you're going to want to set up is your substitutions. You can do this by hitting Y or triangle and then basically selecting which play Player you want to substitute. I mean, if you're playing an online game, number one, all your injured players are out. But number two, this is going to be important to maximize the play. If you're going to be running outside a lot, like say a halfback toss, it's going to benefit you to get the most success out of it if you have the fastest running back possible, since this is a run typically to the edge, and speed is the most important thing. Any fullback dives or uh, passing plays to fullbacks, you're typically going to want to have a running back in that spot. If you're running something like a jet sweep, you're going to want to make sure you have your fastest receiver at that spot as well you can put tight ends at receiver spots if you plan on running out of a certain formation and you want the extra blocking the next most important thing is going to be to set up your audible plays before you pick a play in any offense hit the left trigger or the l2 button i like to have at least one inside and one outside run you can always flip the play with the right stick to give yourself multiple attacking angles when it comes to run plays and then you also want to have a good blend of passing plays for multiple styles of defenses if you pick a fifth play that's different than the plays in your audibles it'll give you a total of five different plays to choose from when you come to the line scrimmage if you're more of a pass heavy player just make sure that you have plays for man plays for zone uh, and then try to have plays that work against multiple different defenses try to have a play for cover two try to have a play for cover three try to have a play for cover four so no matter what defense you look at when you come to the line of scrimmage you'll have a play for it next up you have your pass protection calls all you have to do is hit the left bumper or the l1 button on playstation and you have the ability to slide left or slide right if i plan on following a receiver or if i have um, you know i think there's more opportunity to shorten throw by coming across the field i typically like to slide my protection in the direction of the throw especially if i'm throwing deep passes but you also have the ability to max protect which will basically block any running backs and tight ends if you think you have a, a major blitz coming but you also have the ability to double team any dominant pass rusher so if you have a star player on the line like we do here who's going to give me trouble all game all I have to do is hit down the right stick, then select that player and hit A. And you'll see on this next play how they'll essentially have two blockers that basically attack that player alone, making it much easier for players like him not to disrupt your passing game. Next up, we have audibling receivers. Now, all you have to do is hit the Y triangle button. It'll give you your list of options when it comes to what receivers you want to change their routes. Uh, pretty much every play you should be doing this. Either give yourself a check down with something like a drag or give yourself a one play touchdown or the best possible result when it comes to the play uh, by doing something like putting this receiver on a streak in the bunch uh, which is a very common concept uh, that people use as you can see right here it gets open right up the seam so ultimately you know audibling receivers is something you have to do on every single play if you're a passing player now on defense, there's a lot more effective coaching adjustments to be made. I would argue that you don't have to do any coaching adjustments on offense, but you have to do coaching adjustments on defense. Number one, I mean, a lot of people turn off auto flip. I typically do as well. Uh, this basically gives you more control pre-snap when it comes to setting up blitzes. That's my personal opinion on that. But to be honest, I, it's on a lot of times and I don't even notice it. When it comes to auto alignment, I mean, you can change it to look like anything, but I think that if you try to change it to base or man, a lot of times it makes your players out 
out of position. So I typically leave that on default. Then when it comes to playing the ball in the air, I typically always want to go play ball. I'm trying to get interceptions. I'm not necessarily trying to break up passes. I don't think there's a downside to playing uh, the ball compared to playing the receiver, compared to swatting the ball. It's always the best go for the ball, go for the interception. If you play the ball and you play it well, typically you'll force incompletions based on the fact that a lot of times you'll disrupt passes anyway. When it comes to cornerback matchups, Overall, it's fine, but ultimately, I typically want to go by speed because if you're going against really fast cornerbacks and you have a, a really good cornerback that's not fast enough, that cornerback's going to lose. So by speed matchup is typically the best. There's also by height and route running, by depth chart, things like that. But to me, by speed is always the best way to go. Then when it goes to option defense, I would say without a doubt, the number one way to go is conservative for whatever reason. Uh, you just don't typically see defenses playing the quarterback well when it comes to option plays. I don't really mess with the strip ball or tackling because you get a lot of face mask penalties when you go too aggressive. If you're down late in the game and you need a turnover, it's the best opportunity to go for aggressive when it comes to strip ball and tackling. Uh, typically, though, I find that you just get a lot of penalties. So to me, I pretty much always leave that on balanced. When it comes to zone drops, that's probably one of my most asked questions in the comments is what do I set my, drone, my zone drops to? If I were to set them, I would say typically flats, I would do about, you know, if I'm trying to hard flat my flats, I would go zero to five yards. That's the most effective. But typically, if you run a lot of cover two zones, I typically go about 20 to 25. When it comes to curl flats, I think most people do 25 to 30, sometimes 20. I personally like 20, uh, 20 to 25. Uh, and then when it comes to hooks, I would say five to 10 would be most effective. Although, to be honest with you, I mostly leave these on default because if you have them set preset like this, they're going to be that way no matter what. So if for whatever reason you have your zone flats to drop to 30 and before the snap you want a hard flat, it doesn't matter. They're still going to drop back 30 yards, which to me is part of the issue. So ultimately, I like to have that adjustability uh, pre-snap rather than you know not having that adjustability at all. On defense, substitutions is just as important. A lot of people like to put uh, fast, good covered safeties at their linebacker spots. So that makes a lot of sense. If you're blitzing a cornerback, you typically want to make sure that you have your fastest cornerback at the blitzing spots. You also want to set up your audible plays to make sure that you have a good amount of coverages for different looks. I mean, you want to have your best run defense, your best pass defense, a really good blitz, and a really good base defense. Then you want to make sure you pick a fifth play. It's completely different from those plays so that you have five Five different plays to choose from now there's a lot of different adjustments you can do on defense that can upgrade your run defense a lot if you're looking at something like this which is typically a shotgun look it's best to shift your defensive line in the direction of the most likely run lane which is going to be an inside zone people typically don't run a lot of counter plays you don't see that a lot they're not as effective as inside zones so they're not as good to run but if you shift your entire defense in that direction or just shift your defensive line you'll have a, an immediate advantage when it comes to stopping run plays from this formation you can also shift your entire defense forward to pinch just by hitting down the same button now this will basically give you better run defense against just about any run because now now you have everybody in tighter. In pass defensive looks, you have the ability to press, which is basically going to take away any short throws, but it'll make you more vulnerable over the top. Or you could also give cushion, which is going to be wide triangle, and then up on the left stick. If you're if you're you know up late in games, you're not trying to give up points. You're going to want to drop everybody back to give up no deep plays right away. Probably the most effective tool when it comes to run defense and pass defense is guessing run or pass. To do that, all you have to do is hit the RB button or the R1 button and hit up on the right stick to guess pass or down on the right stick to guess run up the middle. If you guess wrong when it comes to running, you're basically going to, I mean, it's going to be a shutdown run defense, but you'll be giving up a one play touchdown if you guess wrong and they actually are passing. So with that being said, I rarely guess run. Maybe 10% of the game, only in obvious running situations uh, will I guess run. Uh, in a scenario like guessing pass, the consequences are much less. So on a play like this, where I, if I guess pass, number one, my zone coverage assignments will, will do their assignment with out biting on any play action so they'll immediately go to their zone coverages and then my blitzers as well won't waste any time trying to figure out whether it's a run or a pass they'll just go straight for the quarterback so those are all the benefits guessing pass is something i'll probably do 50 percent of the game uh, and it's going to have a huge effect when it comes to plays with play actions to the running back where ultimately um, they won't bite on that and they'll go straight for the quarterback and give me 
a lot more sacks. Now you have the ability to adjust your defensive backs the same way. If you want to go with a hard flat or an underneath coverage, all you have to do is hit wide triangle down on the right stick. If you want to go uh, over the top, say you're expecting a deep pass, all you have to do is go over the top in the opposite direction, you'll get cloud flats. That's consistent with any type of defense. So if you go with a cover three, cover four, you'll get the exact same look. You can also set individual zone assignments by basically selecting that player, hitting the A button, and then I can do any number of adjustments that I want to put them in. I can put them in a middle read, a hook curl. You can see I have a lot of different options here, curl flat, whatever you want to do. But it's easier and quicker if you want to do multiple adjustments by doing quick adjust. For DBs, all you have to do is hit Y triangle twice. It'll give you all your options for DBs. For defensive linemen, all you have to do is hit your D-pad left twice. And for, def or for linebackers, all you have to do is hit your D-pad right twice, and it'll give you all your options. Then you can select them and select whatever assignment you want to put them on. If you want to man them to somebody, you can man them to somebody. It's the quickest way to do that, but it's something that I think is, is heavily underutilized by online players. So that's it. That's the vid. If you guys want to see more videos like this, like say things you can do after the snap, uh, hit the like button let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below. Thank you.